Good morning, good morning. Today is the last Sunday before the autumn equinox. And <laughs> I did start making a video about 10 minutes ago and then I had to stop because I couldn't find my clogs to go outside. And Jack's been patiently wagging his tail. Yeah, he says, I'm ready to go outside. Don't know about you, Mum. So, no wonder Jack's feeling invigorated this morning. He's just eaten a whole packet of dentist sticks. He wasn't supposed to, but I gave him one. And, oh, he just loved it. And he came back and he was begging me for more. So I give him a second one and then I give him a third one. Oh, dear. You see... I'm putty in your hands, Jack. Yes. He says, well, look, come on, Mum, I'm a great big dog. What's the use of one little dentist sticks? And they did come free in a bag of dog food. So I'm just finishing off my coffee here. It is the most beautiful morning. I mean, the sun is streaming streaming down on Beltona. It is just delightful. So we're going to go through this way because I've been sleeping in the lodge of course <coughs> in preparation for um, Nick coming tomorrow because I've had to clear out my bedroom you see. I've been clearing it out and getting it ready for um, the wooden floor to be laid. <clears throat> so I haven't even pulled the curtains in here yet because when I woke up the sun was just streaming in through the door here and I thought oh I'm not even going to bother getting dressed I'm just getting straight out of bed making my coffee <coughs> excuse me and getting out there isn't this beautiful Beautiful air. <sighs> I'm just going to sit down here for a moment and just drink in the sunshine. Oh, the seat's lovely and warm. It's all warm. So, I'm wearing a nightshirt. I know you're so interested in fashion. And these are my little bed socks. <laughs> Jack tries to get in on every photograph. <laughs> oh, Jack, you're funny. Um, <coughs> move out of the way. I'm doing a photo shoot here. <laughs> so. <laughs> I can hardly see the camera. I'm laughing so much. As you can see, those are my little purple woolen Irish knitted socks and made with wool from Donegal. So um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a model's name, some famous model, you know, eat your heart out. Naomi, Naomi, whatever she's called, I can't even think. <laughs> it's too early in the morning. <laughs> Anyway, how's that for a photo shoot? Now look it, Jack, I could hire you out to the fashion industry. You could be, you know, just in every shot. That would get people looking at clothes. Yes. We could have the, the, the um, paw print approval rating. Jack says, oh, she's talking nonsense again I'll just I'll pretend to listen to her <laughs> so there's a hammer on there I was hammering nails into that wood up there in order to hang up um, coat hangers and stuff that I could then hang clothes on to dry <sighs> yes very high tech here Oh. Are you 
can hear a bit of a rustle because I have my coat on over my nightshirt. And I'm wiping my eyes now because they've been running whilst I've been laughing. <laughs> Dogs are no different from us. We get up, you know, and we and we love the sun and the morning and the birds and the air and the bees and all the beautiful sounds that invigorate the day. Animals are the same. I believe all living things have a, have a soul. Reminds me actually, reminds me of a little story from years and years ago. My son, my son was about, um, let me see, he was about eight years old at the time I think. And he was at school, it was a religious school, you know, a Catholic school. And he came home very, very upset one day because what had happened that week, um, our beloved, our beloved family dog had died. Now, any of you who have or have had a family pet will know the crushing, the crushing, overwhelming grief that comes with the death of a beloved family pet. It is crushing. I mean, I'm getting emotional now just thinking about it. Anyway, um, um, right, pull yourself together, Clip. So we came home from school very upset because at the end of day prayers, which happened, of course, you know, in the religious school he attended, um, my son said to the teacher, Please, can we include um, <sighs> Oh, dear me. Very, very, very distressing. Anyway, please, can we include um, Fizz in our prayers? And uh, she turned round and she scolded him. She scolded him. She said, dogs don't have souls. Animals don't have souls. They don't go to heaven. We're not praying for an animal. And he came home both confused, bewildered and deeply traumatised. I mean, he was traumatised. And uh, if truth be told, that point, that day, may have been the beginning of my own journey towards my understanding of the divine. And that to stop looking up into a space we call heaven and to start looking around me into what we see and feel and experience and live with, live with, with Mother Earth. Because as a woman, as a mother, as someone who felt very deeply and I'm very proud to have those emotions. Those emotions that have been scorned for so long by so many generations. Oh, it's just a woman being emotional. Oh, it's just a woman's emotions. Oh, it's... A... This is real. What I feel is real. What is peddled by so many is nonsense. 
and uh, that actually began for me my own spiritual development. I think within that hurt and 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 grief that I shared with my son and in fact my children, you know. And my husband, who is now my ex-husband, by the way, but you know, we're still friends. Because we have common ground, and it's not just common ground in our children and grandchildren. And it never was, um, you know, very much a hands-on grandfather. I mean, I've been very much the hands-on grandmother. But I have lots of reasons to resent him. But I don't, because we share common ground. And you know what that common ground is? That common ground that we had before we had children, before we were married. That common ground is our deep love for Mother Earth and our deep love for animals. Because you see, these little creatures here are what help to make us more human. And the more human we are, the more we can live a life that is lived with Mother Earth rather than on Mother Earth. So there you go, that's my little philosophy. I would apologise for getting emotional, but I don't do that anymore. I'd rather be human than be a robot. Mm. It's quite nice being human. And I do believe that we are all souls or spirits or part of the essence of the divine or the global consciousness or whatever people believe in whatever you believe in but we're all on a sacred journey it doesn't matter what you believe in you look at the common ground that we have and the common ground that we have is that we are all on a sacred journey. That cannot be denied. It cannot be denied by anyone, any religion, any faith. For me, the sacred journey includes all life. Oh, wow. Look at these colours. Look at these colours. Just beautiful. What a blessed, blessed morning. Look at this, look. Look at the large tree against the blue sky. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if any of you ever watched the film Soylent Green. Um, I think it was released in the, sometime in the 70s, possibly the late 70s actually. And I went to see it, gosh, do you know, it might have been the early 70s. I remember going to see it with um, my husband, who may have been my boyfriend then. <laughs> um, and you know what I found the most distressing part of that film? And I, I remember getting very emotional about it. Um, oh, the name of the... Oh, gosh, now look, forgive me for not remembering the names of these incredibly talented actors. But the old guy, um, the actor who played the part of the old guy, um, and he was dying and... Uh, he was he was offered a choice that he could 
Now let me see if I can get this right. There was a choice about dying involved. He could actually um, volunteer for euthanasia. And the reward he got for it was to spend his last 10 or 15 minutes of life in this room that had these huge video screens showing what was Mother Earth and all her life therein that at that point in time no longer existed. The earth had been destroyed, the food sources had been destroyed and people <coughs> were relying on these green green pills as a source of food and, and it was called Soylent Green and in fact the people didn't know that the Soylent Green was the actual um, bodies of the people themselves it was a form of cannibalism they were involved in I mean it was actually a very disturbing film but it's a film I highly recommend because it was also it was also quite prophetic and I don't mean prophetic in that that's how we're going to end up I hope we're not <laughs> it was prophetic in Our connectivity to Mother Earth. That we were living in deep regret at the point when all the beauty was gone. And the Beltana project, as it is, is focused, absolutely focused primarily on not just the restoration of Mother Earth, but bringing her to the point of regeneration, regenerative agriculture, regenerate, no, I don't like the word agriculture, agri, sounds aggressive, doesn't it? Regenerative and gardening sounds too bland, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to call it, regenerative something. But you know what I mean, getting her to the point where she is regenerative and she can look after herself. I mean, in many respects, my work here is finished. And I was thinking to myself yesterday, wouldn't, I mean, I would think it would be great fun, a great hoot altogether, <laughs> if I magically won the lottery and was able to go and buy five or six acres of land. And no, please don't suggest that I go crowdfunding this because I just could not bear the whole thing of crowdfunding. I don't know. I don't know what it is about crowdfunding. It, it just... No. Can't do it. Cannot do it. End of story. Um... But you know, I would love to start all this again on another piece of land. Because look around you, look. What else is there for me to do here? Yes, I know I make the videos and this is a very important part of encouraging other people to go for it. <laughs> go for it, why don't you? Um, oh, look at that sky, look at those trees. Hmm. So mega, mega, mega beautiful. The health, look at the health, look at the health of this little portal. <laughs> Hang on, I better keep care of the health of my doggy. Jack, come on. I don't want anything happening to him. Well, not down on the road. Come on, you rascal. Get up here. 
come on. He says, is she cross with me or not? If she's cross, I'll just go slow. <laughs> no, I'm not cross with you, Jack. Just come here. Come here. So, yeah. Because I have often been asked as well, you know, um, would you do it all again? A thousand times, yes, I would. I know I was, what age was I when I started this? 48? 49? 48, I think. Yeah, because this is my 13th year. So I'm 61 now, I'll be 62 next month. I would start all this again in a heartbeat. Because I still have the energy, you see. I still have the energy and, oh, have I got the enthusiasm? Of course I have. I loved every minute of the work that was involved for me here in planting up this once sad, sad little piece of earth. It was a joyful experience. Joyful. And I wouldn't um, take on a project where the land was rented. No. Because I trust myself. I trust the deep commitment that I have. And I don't want to get involved in issues of trust with other people. You see? I just don't want to get involved in that. For me, it's not about owning the land. It's about the absolute 100% surety and security of being the caretaker and having and having the power within that role to say nope you shall not pass could it be done as a collective i don't know i don't know if there had been a collective involved with this project at the very beginning, I would have been voted down on so many occasions. Because what I've done here was, was fueled, fueled and, and guided by intuition. And intuition to a lot of people doesn't form part of the logic base, you see. All of this is just common sense, I suppose. Anyway, I shall enjoy, enjoy just being here and putting these videos out. Showing you the seasons. And remembering what it was. showing you what it is. You see, it's about possibilities. Come on, Jack. It's all about possibilities. We take the impossible, we make it possible. And I'm so glad I did it on my own. Because that's the bottom line for so many people. And the bottom line is, well, if this grandmother can do it all on her own, without any money, without any help, without any machinery, then what on earth is stopping me?
and even for people who don't have land or who don't have a garden or who do, or have, have not got anything that they can declare to be um, the complete caretaker of. This is a model for people who want to go um, into something like this in, in a collective way. Because at the end of the day, the model says quite securely and emphatically, you plant trees, you plant shrubs, you make paths, you don't follow the model as laid down in so many books regarding horticulture or arboriculture or you know planting woodland you just plant just get out there and plant and if you plant a good mix you plant trees and shrubs flowers herbs whatever will grow because as the trees grow It'll shade a lot of things out, but in the early days you can plant all kinds of stuff whilst those trees are growing. It's just about possibilities. Anyway, that's my rambling, my rambling little chat for this beautiful Sunday morning. The last Sunday before the autumn equinox of equal day and equal night. I wonder what kind of an autumn it'll continue to be. It's been just beautiful so far. As you can see, there's a little bit of leaf fall, leaf drop, but that wonderful colouring is beginning to happen. Like, look at this ash tree above. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Just trying to think of that actor's name in Soylent Green. Is he called James? Something or other. He used to act the part of kind of gangsters in those uh, 20s and 30s films. No, it wasn't that James. Someone watching this is going to put his name in the comments below. <laughs> and I'm going to go, yes, of course that was him. It. I think I'm going to be really naughty now and go in and make a second cup of coffee because as my grandmother used to say why wouldn't you <laughs> have a blessed day everybody